Well, I've got a question about, about earlier in your career. Okay. Uh, the, the, the auditioning process. Mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of actors, that can be you know, kind of uh, ego deflating or, or humiliating. Sure. Uh, did you ever have instances where, where people were just rude to you? Of course, and, always. Um, always. And, you know, there, I think most of the work when you're an actor, when you're first, like, you know, coming up is the, the actual work is going in and auditioning. The, when you get the job is kind of the, the fun of it. Um, auditioning is a, is a, it's a part of the business and it's the biggest part of the business and you have to be good at it. And the way you get good at it is by doing it a lot. And the first few times I was horrific, you know, and, and, uh, and then bit by bit you get better there. But there's certainly been uh, directors and people that were really rotten to me um, when you when you've gone in and read and you know I'm sure I was abrupt or mean with some others right. that, that you know it's it's all about moods and stuff too but y there are certain people that like actors and certain people that don't if they like actors the auditions can be great if they don't um, sometimes it's there's always an element of humiliation when you're walking with a piece of paper going please like me and let me read this for you um, so the secret is to um, just you know, when you walk into an audition, the idea is this. You cannot lose something that you don't have. And most actors go in going, oh, I blew the audition. You can't blow it because you don't have it. And once you understand that, then you're gambling with house money and it's a lot easier to get jobs, you know. You have a lot in common with Harrison Ford in that he paid a lot of his dues in his 20s. He knocked around, mm -hmm. you know, almost on the verge uh, and got it in his 30s. He said that he was grateful that it happened in his 30s because he don't he didn't know if he could have handled it in his 20s. Right, uh, something that you can absolutely, of course. Um, I, you know, I had little glimmers of it in my 20s. You know, I did the first season of Roseanne, but I didn't really have a very strong character in it, and I probably wasn't very good in it. Um, and I had other shots at it. Uh, you know, I did eight shows, eight television shows coming out of all of this. Um, so I was always around and always working. Um, however, if I were experiencing the success that Noel Wiley does at 25 or Chris O'Donnell, who I'm working with now, does it at 25 or 26 years old, I doubt that I would have handled it nearly as well as they do. Um, I'm much happier and much more secure uh, at 35. It's a lot easier. A question about uh, shooting on location. Uh, one thing about New Yorkers is they seem to be a lot more boisterous than a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, when you're shooting on the streets of New York with Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, who's getting the more attention and the more catcalls? Oh, Michelle, I'm sure. Every construction worker in the world, you know. <laughs> I was doing the catcalling, mostly. Um, uh, it, it, it's always fun shooting there. I, I shot a couple of films this summer there. And there was a, uh, there's a great energy and life to it because, you know, um, unlike most cities, you walk out of your hotel room and you're, it's in your face. You know, immediately there are people there and you're kind of forced to kind of attack life a little bit more and the, the, it's it's a great fun city for that and great fun to shoot in. And when you're shooting in the, in the taxi cab scene, when you're being towed around places, right. you know, you're spending a lot of time with your fellow actors cooped mm -hmm. up. Uh, who is the better storyteller and what kind of things did you learn about your co-stars sitting in there? Well, you know, Michelle kept, most of the time Michelle and I were in the back of those little, those sets. Michelle was just, you know, trying to borrow money from me and, you know, get acting tips and stuff. And she, you, know, want, you want to rehearse the love scene again, George? And I was like, oh, Michelle, come on. We've rehearsed, we've rehearsed. Come on, you're married. Um, uh, the, the, there wasn't a whole lot of storytelling. Mostly it was us trying to learn our lines and stuff, unfortunately. <laughs> You know, George, I got a question about mm -hmm. uh, temperamental co-stars. Uh, when a co-star may have an ego, is difficult to work with. Right. I'm talking about, of course, that darn cat. Yeah. Uh, any problem bonding? I'll tell you something. That cat, uh, the cat had its own trailer, which kind of ticked me off, and it was a little bit bigger than both mine and Michelle's. Um, I'm not a fan of the cat at all. In fact, uh, I, I've already said I won't work with that cat again. And the director said he wouldn't either. So, uh, so how, did, how did the bonding process go with the kitten? No, it was nice. Well, I'm allergic to cats, which was something I didn't really know until, uh, until my face swelled up like a tick when I was shooting a couple of scenes. And I said, you know, so we had this fake rubber cat that I used a lot on the set, which was even worse. Because, you know, you could really mess with the kids' heads when they saw that, and you'd twist the cat's head or something. It was pretty fun. And one last quick question. Uh, my parents don't know who, who any actors are and they sometimes they, they confuse them with their parts when they see, if they see them in real life. Right. How many people that you run to the street actually think you're a doctor in real life and do people ever ask you for medical well, I'm advice? I'm starting to think I'm a doctor in real life. In fact, come here a minute. I'm a, um, it, it happens very rarely really. Um, uh, 
the show was so, it has been such a, a huge success that it actually overrides. You know, a lot of times if if it's a moderate success, then you'll be Dr. Ross or you'll be that. But people know our names as opposed to knowing our characters' names. So we're, we're past the point of people coming up and asking for medical advice. Although I'm perfectly willing to give it. <laughs> <laughs>